Farinelli and the King, one of my favorite shows of this season. Now let's talk about this collaboration. What is it like when you are working with your husband who is doing the show on stage? Well, I mean, you can say things to him that you can't say to other actors. <laughs> Mark? Yes, that's very true. <laughs> over the dinner table? Do you put down the script and just talk about the news and the weather or is it just work all the time with you two at home? No, we probably talk about our dogs actually, uh, more than anything else, yeah. No, I, I joke. We, we talk about all kinds of things. I mean, it, uh, the artistic collaboration between us is very special and so we love to talk about it. What made you want to tell this story? I mean, when Mark and I spoke a couple months ago, he was saying that this guy, this um, this artist who performed for the King was like the Michael Jackson of the day. You know, what made you want to tell this story? Well, there's so many reasons, really. I, I just was so struck when I, I heard this story, because it's a true story, about how, how music heals people. And I, I wanted to find out more about it. And then when I did and, and thought, this is an extraordinary event that, that happened in history, and people don't know about it. The fact that actually music helped this man who, who was mentally ill, had, had mental illness so much that he could become functional. And I thought a lot of people want to know about this. And they did. That's so wonderful. And theater can have that effect. And so to take this story and to put it on a stage and allow audiences to experience it live is healing for them. Mark, you are no stranger to the Tony stage. You have a few nominations and a couple wins under your belt. Do you have a speech prepared for tonight? No, I don't tonight, actually. No, I'm not expecting to win. But I'm really delighted to be nominated. Mark, over the years when you've received Tonys, I mean, I always look forward to you getting up on stage because you've given us poems, fun speeches. Yes. I mean, where does that come from? <laughs> Somewhere in the attic. <laughs> I love that. Tonight also is about Tony dreaming. Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groman launched a campaign where, you know, they're talking about, you know, what made them get into theater at a young age. So when did you guys first get into theater? How did theater speak to you and how did it come into your life? Well, you know, I think when I was about five or six years old, uh, my mother used to invite friends around to play with me because I was a very solitary child. And I used to write a play for them because I really didn't know how to play with other children. And then they used to learn my play and we used to perform it for the adults when they came to pick them up. So that's how I got into theatre. So you were destined for all of this, but <laughs> how about you, Mark? I got into theatre in high school. I had a very progressive high school that had a wonderful theatre department. And we did musicals and classical plays and new plays, and this was in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'd been taken to the theater as a child by my parents who were teachers and loved it, but I really learned to practice it first in high school. Amazing. Well, have so much fun tonight. Thank you both. Thank Enjoy you the so Tonys. Much. Enjoy the show. Thank you.